playing drums made out of you know those painting buckets and stuff <laughs> like that <laughs> and i'd put a small chain on the acoustic guitar to make it sound like distortion <laughs> <laughs> i was not really interested in music <laughs> frankly speaking really i was yeah we were very young i got the small keyboard i just started fooling around with it and one day you know we just uh, went to the window and we started playing some stuff and the entire gathering was towards the guitars again. I was like, okay, this instrument <laughs> is not really <laughs> doing anything. This doesn't draw a crowd. <laughs> My dad was always, always uh, you know, he told me at that time, why do you want to join engineering? Go to <coughs> Delhi somewhere, join an arts college, take music. Your dad told and you and I was college. like, no, I'm going to take engineering. <laughs> Welcome to The Rock Show with ASM. Another edition, another story and another fascinating, fascinating guest. And uh, today we have the immensely talented Abama. Uh, Nepal There was always three vocalists in India that I always admire. Uh, one being Abhishek Guru Lemo, who is a fantastic vocalist. Other, I'm Ro Sidan Sharma Bhai, who is a fascinating vocalist uh, in his right. And then there is Mr. Girish Pradhan. Uh, okay. Sir, welcome to the show. This is our first time meeting together. Thank it, you so it, much. It feels like we've always been known each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's great to have you. Long hair. <laughs> Long hair. Yeah, that's how the police recognizes us too. <laughs> yeah. um, it, as I said, uh, you're one of the vocalists uh, in Nepal uh, that we've respected, uh, we've followed for such a long time. And it's an honor to have you here and performing. Um, how does it feel? Uh, is, is this experience, is, this is not your first time, is it? Yeah, it feels uh, like I was here <coughs> for a year, ten years ago, and uh, I was I felt very nostalgic when I came back, and you know when I was roaming the streets of Tamil, I felt like I was you know uh, like like walking down a memory lane, and you know it, it's more of an emotional experience for me. Um, let's rewind. <coughs> Uh, let's go right back uh, to your childhood. Uh, where did you grow up um, 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 and how did you get into music? Well, uh, I was born in Gangtok, Sikkim and uh, my mother herself is a singer so probably we had a natural instinct towards it. We means me and my brother Yogesh who is the bassist of the band right now also. and. Yeah, we were all always a musical family. My father was always interested in art, music, uh, although he, he was always more dedicated towards literature. But having said that, he was always supportive of whatever we did. And my story cannot be complete without my own brother with whom I learned music together. And we were very dedic dedicated no matter what we used to learn in, like he was a drummer, at that time and we were playing drums made out of you know those painting buckets and stuff <laughs> like that <laughs> and I'd put a small chain on the acoustic guitar to make it sound like distortion <laughs> <laughs> those were the, <laughs> those were the days, times yeah. <laughs> so those were the beginnings I guess you know mm. yeah. um, <laughs> growing up at that time in the 90s uh, what were your early influences in terms of music like were you getting your hands on cassettes yeah. Um, were you listening it through the radio? Where were you getting the rock and roll? Yeah, I think uh, for everyone it all starts with, at that time it started with Eagles, Hotel California, right? <laughs> so, you know, everybody wanted their hands on that cassette, Hell Freezes Over album. Mm. So that was the first album we kind of started learning and listening to. But later on, of course, <coughs> we suddenly started getting cassettes that had, <laughs> you know, Eddie on it. <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> just like, you know, <coughs> at that time we were just learning the guitars and when I first heard Iron Maiden, I was like, uh, I felt it was impossible for a human to sing like that, <laughs> play and sing like that, you know. <laughs> but eventually, no matter what, uh, I guess it's all about <laughs> being determined. <laughs> And I, I, <coughs> I had a very similar experience. 
uh, but in my household, I was not allowed to listen to rock. <laughs> it's only the like Backstreet Boys and <coughs> Michael Jackson. And oh then yeah, I heard that phase everybody. Yeah, everybody <laughs> every time I wanted that way plays, yeah, yeah. I think everybody knows the song, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, but then I heard Highway to Hell for the first time, and yeah, you know, yeah. it's, you know, your life takes exactly off. right. So you get a choice right in front of you, and then yeah. you. <laughs> I just got into rock. Yeah, it doesn't mean we'll st we won't still belt out the chorus for everybody, rock your body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, 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 so <coughs> when you started, um, you talked about how you were, you know, just to get distortion, you were putting chains on the guitars and everything. Um, talk to me about that phase. W did you did you know that you wanted to be a vocalist from the get-go? Did you pick up an instrument first? No, I think uh, the whole thing started with Yogesh, uh, my brother, he started learning the guitars, you know. I was not really interested in music, <laughs> frankly speaking. Really? I was, yeah, we were very young. But the thing is, I was more towards stuff like cricket, football and right. stuff, right? right? And then, um, but you know, uh, I got this small keyboard. I just started fooling around with it. And bit by bit, me and Yogesh, we kind of started playing together. Vocals was out of the <laughs> scene altogether. You know. And one day, you know, we just uh, went to the window and we started playing some stuff. And the entire gathering was towards the guitars again. I was like, okay, this instrument <laughs> is not really <laughs> doing anything. This doesn't draw a crowd. And, uh, I think as a kid, you know, those things matter a lot and all. And then I kind of, you know, I, I thought, why don't I try it out? You know, the first time I learned um, a few chords and eventually in just a matter of days, I was so in love with the guitar. Even when we used to go for vacations to meet our grandparents and all. So there was no guitar, right? One month and I was going crazy, you know, when do I get to touch you? <laughs> and then mm. I used to like cut wood and um, destroy a badminton bat, <laughs> you oh. know, kind of <laughs> try stuff. Wow. And so I was really going crazy, yeah. you know, so I knew that music was like already in me. So as soon as I reached back home, I would be like, <laughs> <On it. laughs> you know, <laughs> so yeah, and that was the beginning of the whole musical journey. Right. Um, you talked about uh, being in school and then um, basically piano not drawing a crowd. <laughs> as much as that was all, the uh, biased, yeah. all the pianists <laughs> listening to I'm this. I'm sorry, it has nothing to do with the piano, <laughs> but how I was playing it. <laughs> so, so at, um, at what time? Uh, that was the first phase, you know? Probably, yeah. So yeah I know what you mean, yeah. Mm, so you I played my Casio too, it, it drew <laughs> nobody, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Did you, um, w were you only listening exclusively to Eagles and, and... Yeah, initially one, I think that one year or two years, I was completely dedicated to Eagles actually. <coughs> and it's later on uh, when I uh, was in standard seventh, eighth, like that, <coughs> and I got introduced to stuff like Bon Jovi mm. and Maiden and all. And I kind of... I started enjoying imitating their voice a lot, you know. Uh, the thing was I had a small recorder, so mm. it was like cassette recorder. I used to record myself and listen to it like as, f and I, I would never stop until I felt like it exactly. was kind of, yeah. you know, sounding yeah. a little bit like that, you yeah. know. It's only later on when I was, uh, w my first band, Anarchy, I had a band named Anarchy. <coughs> it was in class nine, we formed that band. My brother was the drummer. And you know, we were looking for a vocalist. <laughs> 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 and I was the rhythm guitar, I was the bassist actually. <laughs> we had a guitarist, you know, so we were auditioning uh, vocalists, vocalist. you know. And we all, we just gave up, you know, because at that time there was this huge punk scene, scene happening. Green Day, mm. the Blink 182, you mm -hmm. know. Some 41. Yeah, some 41. Yeah. So everyone was into that kind of singing, mm -hmm. okay. But we were looking for someone who could, who sing. could do Bruce yeah. Dickinson and stuff, right? <laughs> and the, we just like said, let's take a few days break. Anyway, come to my house, my guitarist said, you know. And then, so I, uh, we started jamming like, why don't you sing it? And then I started singing. <laughs> he scolded me. <laughs> why the <laughs> hell is this man? You've been <laughs> making us look for a vocalist. <laughs> he said like, you're going to sing from now on. <laughs> so, and that guy probably has a big... Uh, Factor, hmm. you know. I don't know if that 
<laughs> didn't happen you know back yeah. in the day i don't know if i had like if i would have really <laughs> got gone got into singing yeah fascinating well a big thank you to him yeah, uh, as we take us urgen yonjon <laughs> urgen yonjon some good songs on youtube too yeah. uh, uh, go check uh, uh, urgen yonjon out and big thank you to him to push girir <laughs> kadam dropping the bass basically <laughs> he um <clears throat> this um this sort of inundation into hard rock and everything eventually now you decide that uh, you go into college right? mm-hmm. um and where did you go to college uh sikkim manipal Ma- institute manipal. of technology w- were you still uh, uh were you looking at education uh, wholeheartedly or were you also sort of deviating towards <coughs> maybe i can make this a profession as well i was quite deep into music at the same time i was a very nerdy person you know <laughs> I, i i was really i loved science i still do and all the nerdy stuff i <laughs> used to like dinosaurs yeah, the same whatever you know well, brand maze and astrophysicist so <laughs> yeah, i think yeah, yeah. it's fine those kind of stuff right yeah. so i was always in a confusion but in school i was sure uh, that i was not going to take music as a career you know oh, you were sure personally not? yeah oh, wow so i was like i my dad was always voice uh, you know he told me at that time why do you want to join engineering go to <coughs> delhi somewhere join an arts college take me your dad told you and i was like no i'm going to take engineering <laughs> <laughs> this is an opposite what, story of what happened opposite yeah <laughs> in those sad stories you're just like you picking up the base all over again yeah, i'm like <laughs> later on after i started my engineering Six months to one year went by, and I was really—I just didn't. Go, I was a very bad student, you know, because I, all I did was, shut myself in my hostel room, mm. sing all the time, listen to music all the time, connect my processor, play guitar, and whenever there was a <coughs> program or a function, we used to call it, we would just—I would just go out and play. or i would be gaming <laughs> in my friend's computer you know <laughs> what were like, you playing back then uh, counter strike <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> I I still play Counter Strike. St- so do I. <laughs> oh nice. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to join you one day. <laughs> okay, so yeah, uh I kind of my uh, major interest was in computer science of course mm. and but slowly <coughs> I realized uh what I was the dedication i was showing in music was way higher you know and also i felt like i was wasting my parents time and money and you know in fact without asking anyone i just took the step and i kind of dropped my college and i mm. went home you know and it was a shocker for everyone initially but i i was kind of determined still my family always supported me mm. and my brother had already uh, left for chennai uh, to study sound engineering which was which was going to prove a plus for all of us mm. <laughs> in the future mm. you know and yeah so it was at that time when i went to uh, uh, the city of gurgaon so i was uh, i joined there as a vocal instructor <coughs> in a school and started like getting some salary and all but i couldn't continue that also i realized even that i didn't want you know yeah. all i wanted to do was go on stage and, and sing. sing you know yeah. maybe i was looking <coughs> for the easy way or maybe i just wanted my freedom i don't know what it is that's all i wanted to do yeah. <coughs> so at that point it was already decided that this was going to be my life and even do regarding genre and stuff i kind of never wanted to compromise you know um, mm. I have always <coughs> been advised by everyone which is good for my good you know but the thing is I just can't you know I am the kind of a person this typical person who just wants to do <coughs> what he likes you know and maybe I just don't like to get out of my comfort zone whatever <laughs> but the thing well, is you can't yeah, force art yeah the yeah. thing is this is me you know yeah. so that's it <laughs> what can i do right? what well, i mean as long as you do anything honestly e- exactly it's going to be good i feel i feel that we really feel true. we feel it in your music in your voice that it's, it's coming from it's from some from somewhere inside even and i can feel that not even teaching music gives you the same amount not even close to the same amount yeah, of satisfaction exactly. <laughs> people think i know tickets studio ma kaam kar raha hai you no man you don't yeah, you don't know yeah, never <laughs> uh, when did you start doing the, these proper like these proper shows 
uh, getting up on stage, doing events. When did this start for you? And how did this start for you? Yeah, the truth is, uh, while in school, when I had that band, Anarchy, mm -hmm. uh, the good thing was my father uh, took over the whole thing. He wanted to manage it. And we had, like, funnily, we had become like the school stars in you know, high mm. school, heavy metal band known by everyone in the other, like, the town, you know. So both of us, me and Yogesh, we were already used to the stage. And um, after leaving college, I had met Suraj, our present guitarist, and <coughs> also our drummer, Nagin. We had already formed a small group and we were doing small time gigs in Gang Talk before I left for <coughs> Gurga. Then I said, let me go, let me explore, let me find out what's going on out there. So I had to do that, you know. And uh, that whole uh, journey uh, brought me to Nepal in the end, back in 2008. And so I started singing and uh, the first guy to give us a chance was uh, Bipin Dai, Bipin Shrestha. He mm. had Lhasa bar, right? So we yeah. used to perform there. <coughs> that He's time. had plenty of places now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's where I started. And uh, eventually, like, you know, how it is, uh, the band kind of disappeared and mm. everyone went here and there. But I still stayed. I kind of stayed for almost a year in Kathmandu. Just before I left Kathmandu, Oh yeah, there's a st here's an interesting story. Uh, Sharad Dai from X Band at the time, he called me and I said, "Why don't we form a group together?" Mm -hmm. Okay, so he gathered some Sonam Dai was there, and okay, I'm, I'm losing out on my memory though. But the whole point of that thing was he named the band Chronicles. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Chronicles, cool. That sounds nice. Okay. And we did two practice sessions, but the thing is, sadly, Sharad I had to leave for Hong Kong. Okay. He had, he wanted to start a new life. Mm -hmm. And even <coughs> I was about to leave, uh, head for India back, you know, again. So it happened at the same time. So did you record any of these jam sessions ever? No. No, these are lost. <laughs> Just uh, in our memory, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> no, the idea was more, uh, more than originals, the idea was to become a band that plays in Tamil mm. kind of regularly, right. you know, at that time mm. that trend was there a lot. Mm. So we were trying out some covers and all, and of course Sharad Dai being an, uh, an artist who has always played originals, yeah. for him it was like, ah, covers, <laughs> 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 even he hated it, <laughs> yeah. which is, which uh, in fact, it, now I'm understanding <laughs> that, you know, it's like how, um, how much he must have, like, enjoyed playing originals mm. and then suddenly trying out covers and all. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, he went, I went back and then, <coughs> so I, <coughs> Yogesh called me, I'm coming home for a few days, uh, I'm taking a break, vacation. And then he, he was about to finish his sound engineering. Why don't you record a song, a demo or something? And then I said, okay. I headed back to Gangtok and we met and then we started writing the song Angel. We had a song we have a song called Angel. So the song was completed and I started sending those uh, uh the song files uh to different uh, magazines, you know, in the northeast. So the first uh, magazine that took it was TNT magazine from Tripura. And uh, they used to have this uh, CD uh, called uh, Great Eastern Rock, Volume 1, Volume 2. So Angel was included in Volume yes. 2, you know. So the first call we got was from <coughs> IIT Guwahati for a competition. And then they really liked the song Angel. And I had no idea about the scene, practically no idea what the scene is. Was it. And I felt like, okay, win or lose, it's a competition, but we'll get, get a good audience, you know. Mm. As I was doing my solo gigs, and I was also getting inquiries from all these college fests and all, I had some members come over, and one of them was, of course, Nagin, and he said, why don't I start playing percussions and drums for you? I said, sure, cool. 
let's rejoin, regroup, you know, <laughs> it was after many years we regrouped. And then Noel on the base, who also, like I, I always used to look, uh, look up to him, you know, because he, he's a senior musician. And I grew up, uh, like watch him play, you know. He said, I'll help you with the bass. So I started playing the guitar, vocals, bass and drums. So, and then th like the outside poster, like just said Girish Pradhan, yeah, Girish live unplugged, you know. So I was like, what do I do? I just wrote Girish and the Chronicles. <laughs> <you know? laughs> it's a story with a marker. Yeah, with a marker. <laughs> and then I, I, I asked everyone if they're okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. So everyone was fine with it. And uh, we decided we'll go for IIT Guwahati, the competition, you know. And uh, at that time, that was the biggest uh, rock competition or festival in the Northeast, apart from Hornbill, I guess. Mm. And uh, all of a sudden, as we were about to leave, uh, Suraj called me. Da, you, you guys are leaving for IIT Guwahati competition? Yeah, bro. Why didn't you call me? <laughs> <laughs> he just suddenly <laughs> popped up at my house and took the lead guitars from me. <laughs> he just <laughs> said, <laughs> I'm going to play the lead guitars. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> I'm done with that. You know? <laughs> and then, yeah, after that. That was the, you can say, the first uh, lineup, you know, Big with yeah. Yogesh as the producer and uh, the four of us as a band called Girish and the Chronicles. That was the first mm. thing we ever did. That's where the journey, <laughs> yeah. journey basically began. Fantastic. Um, we were talking off here, uh, 2014 is when your first album came out. Yeah. 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 Um, and then three singles in the span of these years. Yeah. Now you're working towards the next album, the second yeah. album. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. We were basically working on a very different project first. Uh, this was uh, supposed to be more ethnic sounding. We wanted to m create something that had hard rock, heavy metal, but at the same time had the ethnic elements of our Himalayas, you know. But the thing is, we decided let's delay that album. So let's work more on it, let, let it sound more matured. So we decided since our first album is already a very hard rock and a heavy metal 80s oriented kind of a rock album people started like gain, like they wanted more of that you know uh, it's not like we were going towards what people wanted we anyway enjoy hard rock music right so suddenly uh, after a week or so we got a message from a Denmark based record label named Lion Sprite and they said uh, if we are interested to <coughs> kind of give them an album so that they can release it in uh, they can release it worldwide and like I checked them out and all for me it mattered a lot because an 80s sounding hard rock album <laughs> like we are living in the past right mm. and if there's uh, anyone who's trying to kind of give a helping hand I said why not you know so we started getting really serious about this album so we have finished uh, almost all the songs, but the thing is, uh, the record label gave us a deadline of uh, next year. You know, they had no slots this year, this year sadly. So the album will be released the next year, April. Uh, so we are working on new videos. Uh, we are mixing, mastering songs, and making improvements on the songs wherever we can. It's a very hard rock sounding album uh, anyone who grew up with bands like Motley Crue, Twisted Sisters, Judas Priest, mm. ACDC, Guns N' Roses you know they would this album is for them basically, <laughs> basically you know so we have uh, focused on more minor melodic and stuff like that <clears throat> and there are a few progressive kind of elements also in a few songs which is kind of an introduction to what we will be heading to in the future, you know, it's a small introduction, basically. So, I guess it's it's very exciting, you know, because uh, we are having talks of probably like doing a small tour towards Europe, and so a lot of things are happening. And this album is uh, going to be really, really awesome for people who miss heavy metal. Hard rock, you know, <laughs> like for all those thirsty people mm. like me, basically. <laughs> like me. <laughs>
<coughs> well, we have a bunch of them here. <laughs> you have a big fan following here. That's so uh, nice. You always had it here. <laughs> Thank, you so much, there, huh? <laughs> Thank you so much, Girish. Yeah. This has been a blast. Uh, till next time. This was fascinating, amazing. What a journey. He's had interwoven with uh, so many chapters in Nepal and with Nepalese musicians, but he's making a mark of his own. And I'm looking forward to the second album next year. And I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow and every other night uh, because I am truly a fan of yours. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Till next time, The Rock Show with ASM. I'm out. He's out. See ya. <laughs>